Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Our House 21 and this is time for a little quick tip. And it really will be quick this time, I promise. All right, so what what are we looking at? So here I'm wearing up one of my new Mamba Monster X ESCs. And for those of you who've been paying attention, you see that I've actually been selling my own cat packs for a little bit now. And I mean, I just kind of rig these up as a little side thing. Uh, so this is one of mine that I've got my uh, Dean's connector on the end that I use for uh, wiring up my test connector so I can read my voltage and run. Um, at least look through the window and see what is going on. But, you know, some guys have been kind of curious as to what the best way to wire these things up is. So, you know, you got a lot of options. Um, first thing, though, is that the cat pack should be wired as close to the ESC as possible. Okay? So... The ones that I build, I leave a few inches of wire, and this is a low gauge, well, I mean low gauge wire, that means thick wire. Uh, this particular one has 10 gauge wire on it, and I purposely use the fairly stiff copper stuff because I like to have these things be hard mounted on the chassis and not have the wire flapping around. The nice lightweight silicone wire is good, but it tends to want to bounce around a lot. But anyway, as far as wiring these bad boys up, you see right here, if you notice, I've actually stripped off a little bit of wire lead from the ESC, and I've taken some little wire here. And this is actually from, you know, I took a bread tie and stripped off the little uh, plastic insulation and just use my new nose pliers and wrap these things around together. And that's just to hold these guys in place. So now I'm gonna go back with my solder iron, this guy right here, and I'm gonna heat up the wire. Now remember, when you're soldering, you wanna heat the wire, not necessarily the, you don't wanna put the solder to the tip of the iron itself because then you won't get a good, a good solder joint. So you're gonna to wanna to heat up the wire, get it nice and hot, feed the solder onto the wire. And when the solder melts, then you know you've, you're getting a good connection. And try to use a good rosin core solder, uh, stuff from Radio Shack, or even Home Depot has some decent stuff. Although I think the stuff from there melts at a higher temperature. But anyway, uh, go ahead, heat that bad boy up, feed in the wire, and, um, and that should get you a good solder connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and come back in and show you how to finish it up. Okay guys, I'm back. So now, as you can see, let's get in here. So this is the finished solder job. So it turns out my little guy right here didn't have enough juice to get the job done. So I have to switch to my big industrial strength soldering iron. But as you can see, it came out okay. So again, the technique is just you, you get the solder or I should say, you get the wire hot, you feed the solder into the onto the hot wire, not the hot soldering iron, and then just watch the solder flow. And it made a really good connection, which is nice and solid. So now I'm gonna cover up that kind of ugly little splice here. Uh, just And it's ugly just because you know, I put a lot of heat into it, so the insulation melted a little bit, and that's not that big a deal at all. Just going to cover that all up with liquid tape and then it's going to be perfect. All right, so and I should, might wonder why I have this sticking out like that. That's because, in order for me to, uh, in order for me to very quickly uh, change cat packs, because I'm trying to collect data to show how different cat pack sizes affect the ripple current. So, in order for me to get that, I'm actually going to be attaching my cat packs with Dean's connectors. So, uh, you know, I could very quickly change that. And I can just show you that very quickly on the XL1. Okay, so here I say is the cat pack of my XL1. And then as you can see here, I've got a Dean's connector in the middle. So when I want to swap out 
different sizes, all I have to do is rustle this guy off, plug in another cat pack right to there, and then I'll be able to evaluate the different sizes and see exactly how ripple current or ripple voltage is affected by the size of the cat pack here. So, more data. I'm a data dog, you guys know that. And, you know, we'll, uh, with any luck, be able to try to figure out how effective these cat packs are and you know, if what, if anything, they're actually doing. But just according to my preliminary data, it looks like they're actually doing a pretty decent job. All right, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Our House 21 signing out. And remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, and do it all over again. Peace.